how many Americans are really stupid enough to think that it is a coincidence that Masons were behind every major mind control operation in American history? I would like to draw your attention to the definition of terrorism. How many of you know the difference between terrorism and murder or mass murder? What is the difference between an act of terror and an act of mass murder? Well, it's really motivations and the psychological effect, right? If someone is doing it as an act of terror, it doesn't necessarily terrorize you but they are intending to terrorize you, to scare you, to have you terrified. So what was the Ku Klux Klan? Started by Confederate generals, many of them were Masons, and the main founder was Nathan Bedford Forrest. What was the purpose of the Ku Klux Klan going around terrorizing people? I just said it, right? It was a psychological operation. They were killing people and hanging them to terrorize them. The same reason that the Romans, that these Masons look up to so much, crucified people, right? To terrorize people, to scare them into submission. What about J. Edgar Hoover and COINTELPRO? A mind control operation. Another psychological operation, you might not associate with it with terrorism, but when you look at it from a revolutionary's militant perspective, of course it is terrorism. Because people say to themselves, well, I don't want that to happen to me. And of course, the Rockefeller Commission, the Church Committee, you know, people affiliated with Masonry are the ones who investigate these things. They're the problem and the solution. Then there was eugenics, right? Part of the purpose of eugenics, whether or not you want to admit it to yourself or not, was to terrorize the American public, was to scare them into submission. Whites wanted to separate themselves from blacks, especially Northern Europeans who also wished to separate themselves from Natives, Hispanics, Italians, Irish, the Irish and the Jews. So they said, well, if you mix with these people, we are going to sterilize you and your children. That was the message that they were giving. That these races are inferior they will be treated as such, and if you associate with them, then you will be treated like one of them. Eugenics was coined and really started and kicked off by the guy who wrote, I believe it was Hereditary Genius, Francis Galton, who in 1940, or excuse me, 1844 became a Freemason at the Scientific Lodge at the Red Lion Inn in Cambridge. Who started the CIA? They go around terrorizing people and torturing quote unquote terrorists and saying that you cannot terrorize the world better than we can. We will treat you like Abu Ghraib. We will treat you, you know, like Gitmo prisoners with psychological operations and hire psychologists to help us interrogate, you know, quote unquote, interrogate the prisoners. Who are there in many cases held indefinitely without formal charges kidnapping unlawful detention terrorism you know what terrorists are known for let's not forget the Scottish Rite funded MK Ultra so Truman and Roosevelt started you know the OS OSS and the CIA it was Harry Truman, who ended the OSS and started the CIA from its ashes. 
these were two Freemasons and eugenicists. Did Truman put an end to eugenics on his watch? No. Remember, people were being sterilized into the 80s. So therefore, many of these presidents that you loved were eugenicists. Let's look at this now. They really started sterilizing people early on. And then you had Roosevelt, Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy. Now we're in the 60s now, mind you. Not in the last sterilization. The president hasn't done anything about it. Of course, we all know that I pointed out that in uh, 2015 in Nashville, you know, people were coerced into sterilization as part of plea bargains. And in 2010, right here in California, I believe it was 2010, some, you know, give or take a year, the women's female inmates were being coerced into being sterilized. So one can logically say that every president since 1844 has been a eugenicist, but certainly without any doubt, they can say that every president up until the eighties has been a eugenicist. Okay. It goes back before World War II. Okay, let's put things into perspective. Okay. In 1983, the Oregon board still existed and the last forced sterilization was in 1981. Michigan tried to pass a compulsory sterilization bill in 1897, but it failed to pass. Eight years later, Pennsylvania state legislators passed a sterilization that was vetoed by the governor. Indiana became the first state to enact sterilization legislation in 1907. So, every president since 1907 all the way through to Obama, because remember, in 2010, remember, Obama has two terms, and it's about to end, right? So in 2010, under Obama's watch, you had sterilizations being done on California female inmates who were coerced into sterilization. And in 2015, part of plea bargains in Nashville were agreements to be sterilized. So from 1907 to 2015, every president, okay, since then. So the first 15 presidents allowed for slavery. Lincoln, the 16th president, who died in 1865, I believe when he was, he was, uh, you know, in April 15, when he was assassinated. Okay. He frees the slaves. So between the time that Lincoln freed the slaves and Ulysses S. Grant, you know, it was Lincoln, then Johnson, then the 18th president, Ulysses S. Grant, who started cracking down on the Ku Klux Klan. Partially because they were his enemies, right? The rivals, they were former Confederate soldiers and generals, and they're making a power play terrorizing black people. But it was in the much it was in the far north in Michigan where the first bell was proposed. And Indiana also in the north. Right next to Illinois, ironically, right next to Chicago, you know, right next to Illinois. Right beneath Michigan was the first state to pass a sterilization bill or to enact sterilization legislation in 1907, followed closely by California and Washington in 1909. Isn't that interesting? Liberal California and two northern states, okay, Washington being in the northwest, far corner, were the first ones to pass sterilization. And the first one to propose it was Michigan in the far, far north. And none of you have a problem with that. Well, let's put things in perspective, shall we? 
Before the 1960s, there was segregation after slavery. The Jim Crow era. So it's safe to say that America has always been a racist country and Masons have always had an inordinate influence and they were the ones who coined eugenics in the first place, giving Galton all sorts of rewards and praising him on and on until they started enacting, you know, legislation based on his ideas of racial supremacy. And then Madison Grant, the passing of the great race, Lothrop Stoddard, and all these other scumbags, you know, presidents of Stanford and so on and so forth. But let's, let's just stick to, you know, the main picture here. Not all these things that are disturbing facts that are extremely relevant, but the main picture. The main picture is America has always been a racist nation, whether it was Jim Crow, whether it was slavery, or whether it was eugenics. So who was the first president to allow for this horrible stuff? Who was president in 1909? Okay. When California passed, well, let's start with Theodore Roosevelt. That's where the story of eugenics starts. Then William Howard Taft. Theodore Roosevelt was president from 1901 to 1909. He on record was a eugenicist who praised the eugenicists on record. So Roosevelt, Taft, Woodrow Wilson on through World War I, mind you. Warren G. Harding, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, and then on to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, which takes us through World War II, Americans were still eugenicists. Truman, okay, Roosevelt starts the OSS, the intelligence agency. Truman dissolves it and starts the CIA. Eisenhower, and some of these people cracked down on the Klan and enforced certain things, but they didn't see the ills in eugenics. They were Republicans and Democrats. Truman and Roosevelt were both Democrats. In fact, Theodore Roosevelt was a Republican and his son-in-law was a Democrat. On through Truman, on through Eisenhower, on through Kennedy. Beloved Kennedy was allowing for sterilization under his watch. Lyndon B. Some people say he had a part in killing Kennedy. I don't know. Maybe he did. There's a lot of theories. That's not what this video is about. Nixon. Ford. Okay, and finally Carter. Carter ended his term in January 20th, 1981. The last sterilization was in 1981. All the way through Carter. Okay, the last, the last compulsory sterilization. Then there were coerced sterilizations going on behind the scenes, right? We know that at least it happened in 2010 and 2015, but logic alone will tell you that this probably has been going on all the way through there. That the people in charge were eugenicists who were doing things for the purpose of eugenics through Reagan, through Bush, through Clinton, through Bush, and through on through to Obama. Democrats and Republicans alike. You see how many presidents that covers? It's a lot of presidents. So it's safe to say that the unfair treatment of minorities and policies of segregation have always been the American way because what is eugenics but a deadly form of segregation? We want to separate ourselves from the unwanted people to the point where we are going to sterilize them so we don't have to live with their children and that our children don't have to live with their children. And lo and behold, these unwanted people, quote unquote, were disproportionately black. And keep in mind that over 62,000 people in the United States were sterilized. And even though feminists were some of the main people promoting Sterilization for eugenics. Most of the people sterilized were women. I don't think people understand what's going on here. I think you're just oblivious. You're just out of touch here. We live 
in the most racist country in the world. And we're just so blinded by the propaganda. Well, not me, but, you know, Americans in general, that they don't just don't see it. I and mean, that's a lot of eugenicist presidents. Even the first black president had coerced sterilizations under his watch. And did he make speeches about the ills of eugenics? No. Certainly he was aware of it. So why didn't he say anything about it? Guess he's just a house nigga. We've all said he was the whole time. It's too bad. It's too bad that the black community didn't have a president that stood up for him. He was too busy with the politics of a bunch of liberal eugenicists to actually care about what happens to the undesirable people of society, many of them black. It's too bad. It's too bad that you people don't understand that eugenics is alive and well. And there are six million Masons in the world terrorizing everybody. Because people don't only really have to worry about two million Masons in America when they worry about what will happen if they take them on. But they have to worry about the other four million in the rest of the world giving them aid, coming to their brother's aid. A terrorist or a global terrorist network that has six million people. Now, the last time I checked, ISIS didn't have six million people. But then again, it is America's policy to pick on the weak and to have double standards. If you seem like you might put up a match, you know, you might fight back. You might be hard to take down. They leave you alone, you know, like North Korea and what have you. But if you're an easy target, like ISIS, and you know, then they do drone strikes and act all tough. You know, it's the kind of bitch shit you expect from a nation of cowards. And put things into perspective now. All these presidents that you people grew up respecting. Oh, the president. Mr. President, Mr. President. They were eugenicists. They were racists. They knew that there was a rising tide of color. That's what the book, you know, the Madison Grant's Passing of the Grace Race was about. About these other races that they historically discriminated against. We're now gaining more and more political clout in America. And more and more whites were sympathizing with them. So what did they do? They put on a show. They said, well, we're going to send federal troops to end uh, segregation. While being eugenicists behind the scenes, like the bunch of Masonic dogs they are. Masons on record are eugenicists. On record, the Masonic presidents were eugenicists. There were Masons who were doing mind control. There were Masons funding, Scottish Rite Masons funding MKUltra. And there were Masons terrorizing the blacks after World War II. Ulysses S. Grant had to try to put a stop to it for, you know, political reasons. And plus he was mad at the, the Confederates because he fought against them. He suffered some humiliating, you know, Pyrrhic victories and losses. And so he wanted to get out. And he saw that the Confederate movement had went into the secret society lodges and were expressing themselves through the Ku Klux Klan. So he sent troops to go fight with them about it. It's a no fucking brainer. It's not like he was from a family that loved blacks from its beginning onward. <laughs> it's a story for another day. <sighs> you people just don't get it, man. You just don't. These are eugenicists. These are criminals. And you people say, well, there's, what will happen? What will happen to me? You know, if I take them on. So, you know, it reminds me of Martin Luther King's I've been to the mountaintop speech. I guess this separates those of us who appreciate history's lessons and actually believe in the righteous principles of being American from those of us who submit to authority no matter what and believe that it is okay to let Masons run things so we don't, you know, interrupt our quality of living. And so the first question that the priest asks, the first question that the Levite asked was, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? But then the Good Samaritan came by 
And he reversed the question. If I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? That's the question before you tonight. Not if I stop to help the sanitation workers, what will happen to my job? Not if I stop to help the sanitation workers, what will happen to all of the hours that I usually spend in my office every day and every week as a pastor? The question is not if I stop to help this man in need, what will happen to me? The question is, if I do not stop to help the sanitation workers, what will happen to them? That's the question. Now, some of us get it and some of us don't, I guess you could say. So I'm going to explain it to you. You people are scared of the Freemasons. They are the people who have always run the government. When the government was oppressing political dissidents, it was Freemasons. J. Edgar Hoover, the guy who did COINTELPRO, which included Martin Luther King, was a Freemason. And he was also caught being a cross-dresser. He was a gay in the closet, cross-dressing Freemason. Doing mind control like the rest of the effeminate Masons in their dual gender Baphomet nonsense. But you can sit there worrying about what will happen to you while you pretend to appreciate Martin Luther King's sacrifice and pretend that you're a good American. But you didn't learn anything. You just do what they say no matter who they sterilize, no matter who they rape and kill, no matter how much they pressure your children to be gay, either in the Boy Scouts or in some fake Christian church, or whether they introduce your child to drugs, they go through the, you know, the system, the, the corrections, Department of the Corrections, and they get turned out in prison and they become effeminate. So a bunch of gay masons can play with them and throw parties, you know, at their house and, and lure in, you know, these, these people who have been turned out who think that they're some sort of a rebel because these people love to control revolutions, right? The Jacobins and, you know, the Bolsheviks and whatnot on record Masonic movements, Enlightenment era, you know, on record. It's sad that you people don't get it, man. It's sad. It's sad that people think that feminism and the LGBT movement is just, you know, is for the people or some nonsense. You don't get it, man. You just don't. You know, the clues are all around you. I mean, when you hear about eugenics, you have to look at the deeper implications. What are the deeper implications? I just spilled them out, a lot of them out for you. You know, the deeper implications is that secret societies have always had an agenda. They they started pushing it and pushing it. It didn't work at first. And then, you know, 1897, then, you know, in 1907, it works. Then 1909, at California jumps on the bandwagon. Stanford, David Starr, Jordan, eugenicists, industrialists and whatnot, Taft and whatnot were, you know, eugenicist dogs. The Boston Brahmins, you know, naming themselves after the, the you know, Hindus, right? And the yogas. The yogis, the yogas, yoga bear, yogi bear. <laughs> right. Anyway, just a little joke. But what's not funny is that Aleister Crowley promoted yoga and Hinduism. You say, well, why is that? Same reason why Hitler took their symbol. Same reason why the Ku Klux Klan's, one of their old symbols, I believe it was the second Ku Klux Klan. Could be mistaken. Could have been the first. They had the yin yang symbol. The same reason why Galton recommended that the Asian people overrun Africa and get rid of the black people. If people don't do your homework, you don't do the math. And I can't entirely blame you. What I do blame is I blame women for feeding into this, for playing stupid. You know, in a way, women should care more than men. It's really a close call. 
because they're the ones who bring the children into the world, right? They're the ones who do the majority of raising the kids. And they're the ones who got sterilized the most, you know, when about 62,000 people or so, over 62,000 were sterilized from 1907 to 1981 alone. Not to mention all the covert sterilizations that have been going on and since then and during that time that aren't recorded. You ever wonder, you know, how FDR dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, you know, and whatnot. And he was a eugenicist. His father-in-law was a eugenicist as well. There were sterilizations going on. Do you think that that's a coincidence? And they asked him, you know, did you ever regret dropping, you know, big boy and fat boy the bombs on Hiroshima and uh, Nagasaki? He said, heck no. He said, I made the decision just like that. You know, paraphrasing, he snapped his fingers. Because he's a eugenicist who's pushing the American policy. He's not going to hesitate to push the American policy. And if he gets to kill a whole bunch of people too, you better believe he's cool with it. People just don't get it, man. You just don't get it. These are eugenicists. These are mass murderers. And these are the rich people and the people who conform the most get the money. So I don't want to see you bitches talking about, oh, he's a scrub. You mean he's not one of those conformists that fucking sold out their soul to the devil to have a Benz or something? You know, I'd rather be that scrub. I'd rather be homeless than be that rich guy in a country run by eugenicists and unscrupulous corporations that do all kinds of unholy things. And you'll see even some of these liberal females, you know, a lot of these liberal females, as a matter of fact, take that position when they're supposed to stick up for the poor. When they talk about, oh, GMOs, who do you think's pushing GMOs? What, a bunch of poor people? A bunch of rich people. A bunch of eugenicists. Why are you helping them with your abortion fucking and promoting LGBT, you know, agendas? It's utter hypocrisy. They're Satanists. They're little witches. They're pagans. It's disgusting. You know, stop, stop looking up to the rich who have sold us out to eugenicists, who are in bed with eugenicists, who are complicit in cahoots and collaborate with eugenicists. And then you're supposed to, we're supposed to respect your judgment. Utter nonsense. I mean, maybe one in a million liberal women that are attractive actually, you know, have a problem with eugenics. And, and actually aren't gold-digging whores. It's fucking fake as hell. I, I don't even agree with the typical liberal, you know, philosophy. The typical dem philosophy of the Democratic Party. The state of philosophy. I don't even agree with it. But the few things I agree with, it, it's like they don't really, ca really care about it. Because they're fucking guilty. They're collaborators. They're complicit. They're scum. You know? Eugenesis president after eugenesis president, and they're all on the dollar bills and shit, you know, all these slave owning scum, all these eugenesis dogs on the fucking currency. It's a fucking disgrace. It's like, well, well, we'll put Harriet Tubman. How's that sound? You know, and don't forget, don't, I'm going to end it with this. I'm going to end it with this because a lot of you people, you just don't get it. What did the Masons say? You know, do they admit that these people were scum? No. And why don't they admit that they're scum? Because the white man can do no wrong because one of the most famous and celebrated Masons said so. What did he say about people, you know, white people calling out their own race or thinking mainly of their race? If a white person was to be honest and say, hey, you know what? We were a bunch of slave-owning scum that slaughtered fucking people. You know, we started World War One. We started World War Two. us and the Jews. You know, we did all this eugenic stuff and pretended like we were superior. We've exploited and extorted and did all these horrible, horrible things. The Masons will be like, silence. Why? Because it's written right there in, you know, in Pike's book. You know, it's like eh, about five pages from the end. He says, no one can have a right to think meanly of his race unless he also thinks meanly of himself. He's like, hey, don't forget you're white too, buddy. Before you say, hey, us white people, when we're in charge, we've done all these horrible things. Hey, 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 now, you're white too. And so what does that say about you? He's like, don't forget that. You know, we're the people who go out of our way for presentation. We build these fancy temples why people starve to death. We have everything pristine and immaculate. We have these immaculate outfits to say we're pure. 
We have this pure white apron. We're pure. You know, we want to win wealth and subjugate people. Hey, 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 now. Don't think meanly of us. When we pull up in that Benz and fucking, you know, you know, spray mud on a fucking poor person. Hey, don't think meanly of us. When we yell at old ladies trying to cry. Hey, bitch, keep it moving. I got places to be. I'm important. Hong Hong. Hey, don't think meanly of us. When you see that we're complete hypocrite scum that are doing eugenics based on pseudoscientific nonsense made to massage our egos, don't think meanly of us. Hey, it's un-American. See, they're coming at you from different angles. Like, hey, hey, don't, you know, you're not supposed to step out of line. Maintain the order. What, are you in, insubordinate in the military? You know, are you an insubordinate police officer? You questioning the hierarchy? The chain of command? Hey, 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 now. Then they come at you from another angle. Hey, that's un-American, buddy. Don't point out, don't highlight that we're a bunch of eugenicist scum who kill and, 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 and on record have, you know, drugged people in the vaccines and given them diseases and smallpox on record in the vaccine. Hey, don't point that out. That's un-American. Don't point out that we're a bunch of slave-owning Jim Crow bitches who fucking ended up being eugenicist dogs to this fucking day that put a token Uncle Tom house nigga overseer in the office to try to play it out. Don't, hey, that's un-American. Hey, don't point out that it's white people doing this the whole time. Hey, that, that's thinking meanly of your race. And we're not going to tolerate it. You're supposed to say things like, hey, just because I'm white doesn't mean I don't know how you feel. But you're not supposed to think about calling it for what it is. And I'm not saying all white people are bad. I'm saying look at how this fucking thing works. Powerful mind control being done by who? The Masonic dogs who have always done it. Where this, what was it? Office of Strategic Services. The OSS started by FDR. What a strategic... Then they hired, you know, athletes and historians and the media. They recruited all these people for powerful mind control operations. These Scottish right pussies that funded MKUltra during the Cold War. These Ku Klux Klan ninnies. These Masonic Confederate generals. These people are the scum. I don't think you people get it, though, man. I don't think you're hearing me. I, I feel like you're kind of hearing me, but you're not really hearing me. You know what it's like to be a transcendent hero in a world full of scum? Being shunned by women in favor of scum? You ever wonder why the good guy finishes last? It's called powerful mind control getting you to date the bad guy. And then you turn around and say, respect my judgment, I'm your equal. Bitch, get your mind right first. You know, it's like it's like you're fucking, you know, you're throwing babies off a cliff every day, you know, because you're so doped up and drunk from the fucking New World Order's fucking substances that you don't know what you're doing. You may as well be doing that with your millions of abortions every year and your complicity in fucking eugenics and mass murder and depopulation programs and agendas. You know, you may as well be chucking babies over the fucking cliff every day. And you're getting you're getting nice things for you. You have a Benz next to you and all this jewelry and stuff. And I'm not. And I'm not doing so well. And you're like, hey, you're a fucking scrub. Okay? Respect my judgment. Bitch, stop throwing babies off the fucking cliff. Respect my judgment. You don't know what you're talking. Bitch, you're, uh, what the fuck do you mean? You're throwing them right now. The fuck do you mean? The fuck's wrong with you whores? Respect my judgment. And you, you want you want to be a leader or something. Anybody who's complicit with the New World Order is not qualified to be a leader.